Welcome to Third and Long. This is the second part in a four-part series with Bo Levi Mitchell. Bo Levi is just exploding to have a little fun and tell his side of the story. Not just about football, but family life and other things. It's fun. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, I wonder what it'd be like playing single because you're a, I want to talk to you about what your life is like, you know, married, got a lovely wife, you've got two young kids now, um, to take us through the day by day things that you go. I know you have did to you just, Did you, hold on, wait, were yeah. you about to ask what it would be like to be me if I was single? Yeah, I was going to, well, I was going to say, I'm wondering what it would be like playing single as opposed to playing married with wife and two kids because oh, it'd be man. a big difference wouldn't i think it? if i answer that question my wife would kill me <laughs> that should probably answer the question so <laughs> um actually man uh because some, i it think it's way. kind of the opposite i know i know i know where you're getting at with the question but i think it's it's actually the opposite i think i'm a better player now because of her right um because it keeps my head on right i only think about football when i go home i only think about family i'm not thinking about where's the next party um, you know, who's the next person to hang out with, you know, building your false confidence in that part of the life, um, yeah. which you've seen a lot of guys, which there's nothing wrong, man. Go live your life the way you want to. Um, you know, but I have something to play for every day. Yep. I've got two beautiful daughters to play for. Um, their, you know, colleges to pay for, their weddings to pay for. And, uh, and I've got a wife that, that treats me very, very well. And, um, and she definitely keeps my head on straight when it comes to everything football. Good, you know, but take it back. <laughs> he still wants the answer. <laughs> no, I've, I've had single buddies that have played in the league, and I, I've seen what it has done to those guys. But take us through what, you know, when you go home and you got two young kids and, and the wife, you, want, you help out when you get home. You're not just one of these dads that show up and you don't play with the kids. You don't attend to the kids. Oh, no, it's as soon as I walk in, uh, my oldest daughter, Ellie, runs to me yelling, Daddy. And it's at least, you know, play basketball, let's play basketball. So it's all sports all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get her to jump off the bed on the pillows, trying to shoot the basketball, trying to get her to ride a scooter. Um, slowly just trying to get her to be the best athlete she possibly can be <laughs> without mom noticing too, too much. <laughs> uh, but I think mom's on board with it. Mom's took her to gymnastics today. Um, so that's kind of our thing, man, just getting them in sports as early and often as possible. But yeah, as soon as I go home, it's, it's kids, kids, kids. Um, and then my wife and I usually get about an hour, hour and a half to ourselves after we put our oldest daughter to bed. Right. And the little one's taking a nap. Um, but it's it's fun, man. I think it's it's nice to have a routine. You yeah. know, I think uh, that's probably the best part of it is having that routine, knowing what every day is going to be like, but still having those little surprises every day, whether it's, you know, the daughter giving you a smile, telling her that she loves you, um, or just showing you something that she learned that's new. Yep. Um, you know, when you take when you have that, you know, that's the point I was trying to make. It, some guys want that family life so they can stay totally focused, which is what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the family life definitely found me. Um, you know, fell in love with my wife early on in college and, um, you know, almost uh, almost lost her, which was would have been a bad decision for me. Um, <laughs> luckily, she took me back and, uh, and man, the story- oh, Hold on, what happened? Well, all right. I let my brothers talk me into uh, being a, a stupid guy. Um, you know that. You know I'm the king of stupid guys. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That was good. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I haven't done anything worse than you. Um, no, I think it was it was making the the decision to what a lot of football players try to tell you is the right thing to do, which is to leave everything behind and go focus on football, and that's right. the only way to succeed. And, and yeah. that's not true. Yeah. And being up there for a year. Um, you know, meeting Kevin Glenn and realizing that he's a guy that's been up here for a long time and has a family and been doing it right. Dave, who has a family, met, yep. met his wife up here. Um, I think at first I didn't want any distractions and quickly found out that that was a huge mistake. Yep. Um, yeah, and so got on my knees, asked her, asked her to take me back. She did, uh, you know, luckily. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of the story is written from there. Sometimes they're smart enough for both of you. <laughs> oh, she definitely is, man. She's definitely smart enough for both of us, that's for sure. I want to talk about the quarterback factory. You know, uh, Dave is a player. Uh, since about 90, when they brought Doug Flutie in in 92, 
And as I said today, with the exception of one owner and a son, this has been a, a quarterback factory, hasn't it? <laughs> Which is a great story, by the way. Yeah. I've been told that story a couple of times. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. It well, has. they overlooked Henry Burris coming back. They overlooked Dave Dickinson coming back just for this kid to play. And then they went through as many bracelets as I got on. We had quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> so being part of this, I mean, uh, because, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're there and you've replaced Drew Tate after he got hurt. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's something you quickly find out, you know, coming to Calgary that you're a part of something special. Yep. And if you're here as a quarterback, you're definitely here for a reason. Because Dave and Huff, these guys, they know how to find talent. They know how to groom talent. And I think that's the most important part of it. Um, yep. They take the time to groom you. You know, I didn't start the day I walked in. It, I sat behind uh, Drew and Kev for the first year. Got some short yardage reps. Second year, I got three starts. And then the expansion draft came with Ottawa and they decided to protect me. And, you know, they gave me two years to get ready to play right. and become a starter. And I think, that's, I think that's huge. I think a lot of guys, you know, even Johnny Manziel coming in, things like that, people just want to see a name and throw you as a starter right away. I think you've got to do a good job of grooming a guy, teaching him a system, making sure he understands the CFL game compared to the American game before you just throw him out there into the fire. Um, so yeah, man, I got to attribute a lot of my success, um, which I'm sure every quarterback that's been through Calgary would, um, you know, to our, our coaches, Dave and then Huff. And yep. back in the day, I'm sure Wally was a part of the, a lot of those guys. Yeah. But, you know, when you look at that, especially lately with Huff and, and Dave, two guys that played the position, two guys that played it well and played and knew it. Right. So it always helps. Yeah. I, I played for a quarterback coach that didn't play quarterback one yep. time. And that's tough. It no is kidding. awful trying to listen to a guy that's never been back there. And he wants to talk about X's and O's and this is how it should be on paper. And it's really hard to trust that guy and, and believe in what he's saying when you know he hasn't been back there. So when you're learning from guys, you know, like Ryan Dinwiddie, like Dave, right. like Huff, that have all been back there, have all done it very successfully, it makes it very easy to bounce ideas off these guys to take what they're saying um, and just kind of manipulate those things and make it your own. But uh, yeah, man, it's... It's pretty special to learn from Dave when you, you know he's been in the same offense around 27 years, something like that. So here we are in shades, and I'm going to tell you a funny story because I used to cover the Riders back in the day when Huff played. Uh, I was 10, <laughs> but Huff used to dress up as one of the Blues Brothers when he went on road trips. Oh, I'm he had definitely going to do the that. The glasses and the hat and the suit, he had it all down. Him and Lyle Wasnesenski, the funniest guy ever in the CFL, I guarantee it. But that's how they would board the plane, no as way. the Blues Brothers. I'm gonna do it now. Yeah, you got it. I'm gonna get what is it? Three, three guys. Oh, it's two. In the Blues Brothers. Yeah, the original guys were two. Two. Yeah. I'm gonna get somebody else to do it with me. It might be Klukas. Yeah. Michael Klukas. He's a good guy, man. He's my roommate on the road. Yeah. Funniest guy on the team, by the way. Oh, then you got to do it. White Lightning, we call him. <laughs> you need a guy like Scott Cole on your team to loosen everybody up. Is that what he is? Uh, we've got a couple guys like that, yep. and I, you're right. You definitely need that in the locker room. Those guys that, you know, you have a bad practice and somebody can say that joke. I think that person for us is uh, actually Wint McManus. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah, number 48. He's been a special guy for us for a long time. He's been starting at Will Linebacker yeah. this year. And, yeah, man, like, you just need that guy that, you know, is really hot, training camp's been long, and all of a sudden he runs out, you know, yelling, hooting, and hollering. Um, just kind of gets you going for the day. And then again, yeah, practice bad, game's going bad. Just a guy that'll say something kind of funny to remember, remind everybody it's a game. Yep. Listen up and you usually play better that way. Right.